Hollywood, California, Monday, November 2nd. The Lux Radio Theater presents Gary Cooper in The Virginian with Charles Bickford, Helen Mack, and John Howard. Lux presents Hollywood. Our stars, Gary Cooper, Charles Bickford, Helen Mack, and John Howard. Our guests, Sidney Skolsky, noted Hollywood columnist, and Richard Klein, physical trainer of picture stars. Our producer, Cecil B. DeMille. Our conductor, Louis Silvers. We wish you could all be with us tonight in our theater on Hollywood Boulevard, not only to meet our stars, but also the many other screen celebrities whom I see just beyond the footlights, awaiting the curtain of another great show. But wherever this hour finds you, a hearty welcome from Lux. This program comes to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, the soap preferred by nine out of ten Hollywood stars, and is yet so inexpensive that every girl can use it every day. Our message is to use all the cosmetics you wish, but remove them thoroughly, the Hollywood way, with Lux Toilet Soap, whose active lather cleanses the pores and keeps your skin soft, smooth, always lovely. Our show opens with word from our producer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Here in the hometown of movies, we are so used to stars who grit their teeth, clinch their fists, and crash their way into the limelight that a man as shy and human as Gary Cooper is a complete novelty. On a Hollywood soundstage... He's as refreshing as a breeze off the prairie. Last month, the Cheyenne Indians up in Lame Deer, Montana, tried to give him a name. They called Gary Comaste. He was mighty pleased to become a member of the tribe until he discovered that his new name means Tall Handsome One. <laughs> Gary was an unknown actor in Westerns when he was called in by the Paramount Studios for a screen test. Entering the room, he faced an office filled with producers and executives. The long young man from Montana looked at the expressionless faces, swallowed hard, smiled feebly, and bolted for the door. But his personality clicked. They gave him an important role in Wings, and Gary's been soaring steadily upward ever since. I welcome him tonight as a fine actor, a sincere co-worker, a fearless man, and a close friend. Charles Bickford is also a most welcome addition to our cast. Charlie left the stage to work for me in Dynamite my first talking film, and has appeared in four of my pictures since, including The Plainsman. Charlie's no mean antagonist as a villain. In fact, it took an African lion to put him in the hospital. He will be heard tonight in the role of Trampas. Our leading lady is Helen Mack, who has been on stage and screen since childhood and is one of the most unspoiled young actresses in Hollywood. She is heard as Molly Wood. The role of Steve is played by John Howard, co-star of the film, Valiant is the Word for Carrie. And now, up with the curtain, as the Lux Radio Theater presents The Virginian, written by Owen Wister, starring Gary Cooper with Charles Bickford, Helen Mack, and John Howard. <laughs> Wyoming. In the early 1900s, the dusty little town of Medicine Bow is humming with activity, and though it's only 10 o'clock in the morning, the Maverick Cafe is filled with a noisy, rowdy gang of cowhands, whooping it up on their one day off. <laughs> From the street comes a tall, quiet-spoken young cowboy, known to his friends as the Virginian. As he steps up to the bar, he gets a loud welcome from an old pal, Steve. Hey, you gall dang mangy soup fed buzzard, who are you passing by? Steve! Nobody else but. Well, Steve, you ornery low down cousin to a bald beaver. What in blazes are you doing here? Oh, nothing special. Blew into town about a week ago. Well, I'm sure glad to see you, Steve. Say, it must have been four years since we was riding together. Four years or more. Yes, sir. 
Say, I heard about you being made foreman over at the Box X Ranch. <laughs> it kept me laughing for a week. Yeah? <laughs> well, what have you been doing? Oh, the same as usual. Working some and playing some. Uh, mostly right. playing. Sure. <laughs> you no good, Weasel. You're just the same as always. Ain't no account to nobody nowhere. <laughs> Ain't you ever going to settle down? Oh, B? Say, what for? Buenos dias, senor. Oh, hello, Nina. How are you? Muy bien. Hey, let me introduce you to an old pal of mine. Oh, hello. Morning, ma'am. He's very handsome, no? <laughs> yeah, just a minute. Sure, he's a real lady killer, Nina. Gee. <laughs> hey, you better watch out for this hombre, ma'am. He's a low-down, double-barrel liar. Don't you believe a word he says? Oh, yeah? <laughs> hello. What's the argument, boys? Oh, hello, Trampers. Step right up and join in. I don't know what it's all about, Nina, but whatever it is, I can settle it fair and square. No. <laughs> in my favor. When would you get in, Trampers? Just blow it in to beat your time with this lady. Come on, Nina, I'll buy you a drink. But, senor, I am with this gentleman. You mean you were with him. Come on. No, stop. I want to stay here. Hey, I ain't arguing with you, sweetheart. I'm telling you. No, let me go. Wait. There ain't no argument, Trampers. We're getting along just fine. Not that it's any of your business. Who's talking to you? I'm just telling you. Yeah? Well, when I want to know anything from you, I'll let you know, you long-legged son of a... Wait a minute. If you want to call me that, smile. <laughs> You're getting mighty touchy, ain't you? About some things. You better be leaving, Trampas. Sure. Come on, boys. I'll trim the hide off you in a game of stud. <laughs> Hey, I wouldn't mix it done with Trampas if I was you. Trampas and me just don't mix at all. Hey, where's the Virginian? Somebody want me? Hey, Nebraska. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, hello, boss. Say, the Wyoming special can't get through to the station on account of them cattle blocking the right of way. All right, I'll tend to them. Come along, Steve. Sure. I'll help you clean them up. Get up there. Get on. Get on. Hey, head him this way. All right, Nebraska. Show him along. All right, get along there. You. Get along here. Well, I guess that fixes it. Thanks, Steve. Well, look at who's here. Where? That girl over there. Just got off the train, I reckon. Hmm. Hey, she sure is a fine-looking female. Yeah, I'd kind of like to make her acquaintance. I seen her first, Steve. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with her? <laughs> Yeah, she's backing up like a scared calf. <laughs> hey. hey, look at her. She's scared of that milk cow down there. Hey, ma'am, that cow won't hurt you none. Wait, Steve. I'll go and rescue the fair lady. Rescue her? For what? A moo cow? Don't stop me now. Yeah. Oh, 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 get away. Get away, please. Oh, get away, I said. Oh, oh. oh ho. Get out of here. Get out of here, you ornery devil. Oh. Go on. Go on, get out of here. Oh. Well, the critter's gone, ma'am. I reckon you're safe now. Oh, oh, thank you so much. It's a mighty lucky thing I happened along. A wild steer is an awful ornery critter. Oh, it did frighten me, just for a moment. If that steer had seen you face to face, just like I'm doing now, ma'am, uh, he couldn't have been so bean. <laughs> oh, thank you. I reckon you're the new waitress at the Lone Star Hotel. Oh, no, I'm a teacher. Oh, the new school ma'am? That's right. I've come all the way from Vermont. Well, that sure is fine. Well, thank you again for rescuing me. Oh, that's all right. Any time at all. Mister, mister. Uh, what's the matter, little girl? Did you see my bossy? Bossy? What? Why, uh, no. She's my milking cow. I was getting her home and she ran away. And I can't find... Oh, there she is. Bossy, here, bossy, here, girl, here, bossy. Oh. So that's your wild steer. <clears throat> a milking cow. <clears throat> well, you see, ma'am... Thank you so much, Mr. Cowboy. It was so brave of you to rescue me from Bossy. Well, look, ma'am, it was like this. Don't you think you'd better go and rescue that little girl? I'm sure she'd be quite impressed. But if you tried to make a fool of her, she'd probably slap your face. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. I'm sure sorry it wasn't a real steer. <laughs> My Lulu gal's a daisy. She wears a big white hat. Then I'll bet your life when I'm in town. Easy, boy. Who's that, the Virginian? That's right, Judge. I thought I recognized you. The doctor wasn't sure. 
On your way to that welcoming party they gave him for the new school, ma'am, I suppose. That's where I'm heading, Jed. Yeah, me too. <laughs> they say she's a mighty pretty girl. Yeah, she sure is. They say. The Valley Ranchers had another meeting this afternoon. About rustlers? Yeah. The patience is plumb give out. I tell you, the country's going to the dogs when it pays a man better to steal than to work. It ain't everybody that's stealing cattle, Judge. Some is, and it's up to us to find them out. You know, Judge, I got an idea that ain't going to be so awful hard once we set our minds to it. What do you mean? You got any suspicions? Maybe. Who? Well, it's only a suspicion, Judge. Cattle rustling's a nasty thing to pin on a man unless you got proof. Tell me who it is. I'll get the proof. No, I reckon I'll wait a while. And if I was you, Judge, I wouldn't say nothing about it at the welcoming party. No use spoiling the school ma'am's first social gathering. Well, I guess this is where we wash up, Trampus. Yeah. Sure sounds like a good time in there. Sure does. Hey, Steve. Yeah? About what I was saying before. You ought to get smart. Cow punching ain't no way for a fellow like you to make a living. Oh, I know it, Trampus. A cowhand's dumb on a low-coat steer. Freeze all winter and bake all summer. And for what? $30 a month and key. Sure. But making money's easy if you know how. And if you're smart... Well, uh, what's on your mind, Trampus? Nothing I want to talk about now. Well, that's when? See me tomorrow. I think you'll be interested. Hello, Steve. Oh, hello. Well, I thought you was going to wait for me tonight. Oh, you was late and Trampus dangled by, so I, I sort of come along with him. Well, uh, you ain't very choosy about your company. Maybe you'll explain what you mean by that. Nothing, Trampus, Nothing. But uh, maybe I ought to compliment you, Trampus. You've got so many calves this year. I reckon it keeps you all wore out branding them. You're liable to talk yourself into a heap of trouble, my friend. Since when was I your friend, Trampus? Hmm. All right. That suits me. See you later, Steve. Yeah. Well, Steve, how about circulate around to the dance? Sure. Come on, let's go in. <laughs> Hey, there's your new school mom over there. Yeah. Hey, she looks mighty pretty in her Vermont dress, don't you? Say, she'd look good in an engine squaw blanket. <laughs> well, uh, here goes, Steve. You gonna ask her for a dance? And I'm gonna get it. <clears throat> evening, ma'am. Oh, good evening. Would you care to try a turn at dancing? Huh? I said, would you care yes, to... Yes, I hear you. You're from Virginia, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. That is, I was born there. I always thought that Southerners had such good manners. That's correct, ma'am. Least the way they, they should have. Well, in New England, where I came from, a man always asked to be introduced to a lady before he asked her to dance. I ask your pardon, ma'am. Will you excuse me for a minute? Certainly. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, uh, Shorty. Yeah? Come here. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, you know the new school, ma'am? No, sir. Sure, I know her. Well, uh, I want you to introduce me. Formal like. Sure. Yeah, come on over. Thanks, Shorty. Oh, Miss Wood. Yes. Miss Wood, I'd like to present an old friend of mine to you. We calls him the Virginian. Very pleased to meet you, ma'am. Oh, yes. You're the gallant young man who rescued me from the tame cow. What's that? Tame cow? It's all right, Shorty. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so long, boys. Well, uh, Well? Uh, would you like to dance, ma'am, or should we sit down? Thank you. I am a little tired. Uh, I'd rather talk than dance. Can't talk and dance at the same time anyway. Should we go outside? Very well. This way, ma'am. Nice and quiet out here. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, sure is. <clears throat> uh, Miss Wood... Uh, there's something I'd like to say to you. Do you mind if I say something first? No, ma'am. I suppose you feel very proud of yourself for what you did the other day. Yes. Uh, no, ma'am. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, ma'am. I, I, yes, ma'am. Is that all you can say? Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. Well, I don't think you're a bit funny. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Well, that's better. <laughs> now we're going to get along fine. You said you had something to say to me. Well, I reckon you said it already. I was just going to apologize to you on account of acting up like I did about that cow. Oh, I see. Now that's all over, and 
We've been formally introduced and all. I'd like very much to go riding with you someday. Oh, would you? Yes, ma'am. You ain't afraid of me, are you? Oh, why should I be? No reason at all. I'm as gentle as a plow horse. And I'm powerful interested in education. Oh, then I do hope you come to some of my classes. I have several little boys just your age. I'd sure be proud. Yes. <laughs> Only I don't reckon I could get away from work to go to school right now. Oh, but you could get off to go riding. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> hmm, thank you, ma'am. I'll be calling for you up at the schoolhouse. Well, uh, how do you like the new horse? Oh, she's marvelous. What's her name? <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Well, uh, her name is Sir Henry, but I call him Hank for short. <laughs> well, he's a nice horse. You want to get off here for a while? All right. Easy now. There you are. Oh, thanks. Oh, it was wonderful to ride out here. I love it more every day we come. I reckon I do, too. Never noticed the country much before, but coming out this way with you all the time, I like it fine. You haven't told me about that book I lent you last week. Did you finish it? That Romeo and Juliet? Yes, ma'am, I finished it. Don't tell me you didn't like it. Well, I ain't read any poetry before, but as soon as I get the hang of it, it'll be as easy as reading the patent medicine catalog. <laughs> didn't you like the story? Well... They raised a mighty strange breed of men in them days, but in some respects, this Romeo was a pretty good hombre. Oh, indeed. Just a pretty good hombre. Yes, ma'am. He had his enemies and he killed them. Shows he wasn't no coward and proves he was quick on the draw. Why, you approve of killing your enemies? An no. An eye for an eye? No, no, no. Not if there's an honorable way out, no, ma'am. But them enemies was particular ornery. They had it coming to them. Well, what else? What didn't you like about Romeo? I didn't like him in that balcony scene. The balcony scene? Why, that's the most famous scene in the play. Maybe so, but not for me. What's his idea in traipsing up and down a rope ladder, anyhow? Why didn't he go in through the front door? Don't you understand? Their families were enemies. But traipsing up a ladder, that ain't my idea of a real man. Well, what would you do? Go in and kill her father? That would be nice. No, I wouldn't have killed him, but I'd have had a showdown with him man to man, and if he was... Too stubborn to call off that fool feud, I'd have grabbed Juliet right off that balcony and married her. That was just what he was planning to do. Yeah, I know, but he couldn't stop playing actor on that balcony. Wasted so much valuable time, he got them both killed. What would you have done? Well, I ain't no Romeo, but if I loved a gal and, and wanted her, I wouldn't fritter away the time on no rope ladder making up poetry. Well, what would you do? I'll show you. I'll just take her like this. <gasps> Let me go. Stop it. Stop. Oh. There, that's what I'd do. <laughs> you're, you're just as sure of yourself as ever, aren't you? Molly, don't play act with me. We don't fool each other. We ain't on no balcony. Molly, don't you think the spring is the prettiest time of the year to be married? I don't want to be married. Oh, Molly. Well, not yet, anyhow. I've got my school and... I'm just getting started and... Teaching school. That ain't no woman's job in life. It's mine. Oh, I, I like you and I admire you. But I'm not sure of myself yet. This country's so new and strange. I feel like an, an alien, an outsider. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. But I just feel that I'm, well, different. Hmm. Women are funny, Molly. I don't understand them. Well, I'm glad you think you don't. What was that? Sounds like a calf balling. I better find out what the trouble is. I'll go with you. No, you better stay here. I'll be right back. Come on, boy. Hello, Steve. Oh, oh hello. I uh, didn't know you was coming up this end of the range. Oh, I'm just kind of... Drifting around? I've just been putting a monogram in a couple of strays. Yes, so I noticed. Steve, there's no use talking around things. You've been putting Trampas's brand on somebody else's calf. Well, what about it? That's rustling, Steve. Oh, what's a few calves more or less to a man that's got thousands? I'm sick of nursemaiding somebody else's cows around for no more than enough to keep you on smoking tobacco. Don't talk that away, Steve. 
You and I done a lot of loco things together. But there's some things that ain't only loco, they're plumb wrong. Now you take life too seriously. This whole country's taking things more seriously. I ain't trying to lecture you or play Sunday school on what's right or wrong, but the ranchers around here are plumb sick of having their herds trimmed out, and they'll soon be posses out with ropes on their saddles. Well, I'm carrying a nice limber one to make it easy for them, if they catch me. You blamed hard-headed fool. What are you going to do? Turn me in? Nobody's talking about that. I reckon I couldn't be sore at you no matter what you did. But listen, Steve. You and I have been friends too long to find ourselves lined up on opposite sides in anything like this. Oh, shucks. How do I know what I'm going to do? This country's getting too civilized, too solemn. Yeah, I got a notion I'll be moseying out to the gold fields or someplace. You don't need you leaving, Steve. You know, you can stay on here as long as you want. Just so you don't do nothing crazy. And if I do? We ain't going to talk about that. Not till the time comes. Only I'm just hoping the time never does come. Gary Cooper will be back in just a few moments to continue the story of the Virginian. But now, let's go to the airport in Burbank, out beyond the huge Warner Brothers studio. And as the 5.30 plane takes off for New York, in the crowd are two girls. Let's listen. That must be a pretty important letter, all right, that we should drive way out from Hollywood just to send it off in the 5.30 plane. Is it important? an airmail special delivery to Bill Butler. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I think it's fun to see planes off. A lot of other people do, too. Look at the crowd. What? Well, they're not looking at the plane. No. Look at those mics and lights over there. Oh. They must be shooting a picture. Yes. Isn't that Ann Southern? Yes, it is Ann Southern. Oh, doesn't she look like a million? Mmm. Some snappy suit she's wearing. Some snappy complexion, too. I wish I had one like it. Ann Southern's complexion does look lovely. It will continue to look soft and smooth and clear because this youthful star protects it. She knows that enemy to good looks, cosmetic skin, comes when you're careless. Here's what this charming star says. Of course I use cosmetics, but I don't risk unattractive cosmetic skin. I use Lux toilet soap because then I know I'm safe. That's good advice for you. Lux toilet soap's lather is active. It removes every trace of dust and dirt, stale rouge and powder that might remain to choke the pores. It's when the pores are choked that tiny blemishes, a dull, lifeless look, enlarged pores, tell you you're getting cosmetic skin. Remember, put Lux toilet soap on your shopping list. Buy for your complexion the same care nine out of ten screen stars use. Once again, Mr. DeMille. We continue with The Virginian, starring Gary Cooper with Charles Bickford as Trampas, Helen Mack as Molly Wood, and John Howard as Steve. Several weeks have passed since the Virginian warned Steve against rustling cattle, but the warning went unheeded. We find Steve now with Trampas and two other men engaged in running a herd. It's late at night. And they've made camp in a rugged hideaway deep in the hill country. Trampas, squatting beside the fire, gloats over their victory. Not so bad. 